Hey there, and welcome to my tutorial about how to draw roses. Their complex, beautiful shape with often dozens of petals and a large variety in colors makes them one of the most popular flowers. And so I have accepted the challenge to draw them myself. Alright, let's start. Thank you. At first, let's take a look at the roses' blooming stages. They start as a bud wrapped in five sepals which split open when the rose starts to expand. The more the rose petals are unfolding, the further the sepals bend back and dry out. It is up to you which stage you decide to draw, maybe about midway and then you often end up with a more cylindrical shape. Or the fully bloomed rose with the outer petals stretched out to the maximum. I personally will focus mostly on the fully bloomed stage. However, you can of course apply what you learn in this video to other stages and other kinds of roses. So there are several different ways to start sketching a rose. Some do it with a cylinder, and that just works fine, especially with a half-bloomed rose. I like to draw circles that represent the height levels of specific layers of the petals. Ok, that probably sounded confusing, so let me illustrate it. This is a strongly oversimplified cross-section illustration but it gets the point across. The petals are layered over each other and can roughly be sorted into several levels. The innermost layers are centered. Keep in mind that the petals don't grow out of the middle bottom, but along this ring here. Therefore, the innermost petals bend inwards and aren't vertical. Additionally, they are slightly smaller than the outer ones. This leads to the innermost petals being lower than the outer ones that reach up vertically. The outermost layers of a more than half bloomed rose are curving to the side with strongly folded edges, so their height is significantly lower. So what I normally do is choose a middle point and draw a line downwards from there. The angle of this line defines the tilt of the overall rose and we have to think about from where we are looking at the rose. In this case I want to look almost exactly from above. If we would have 100% a top view, then this line would just compress to a single point. If we would look at the rose directly from the side, then the line would be at its full length. And here I am adding some marks that are supposed to represent the different height levels of the petals. And with that, I'm going to draw some circles. These circles are of course also squished according to the perspective. So since we look at fairly, like almost from the top, this circle is just slightly squished. And here in the middle I'm also going to draw a small circle for the innermost petals. This circle here is for the petals that grow up perfectly horizontally and therefore are the highest. Then I make this circle bigger and have this point here as the middle point and draw another one of the same proportions like the one from before. And what we will normally have is this kind of shift. So here we have barely any gap, but down below here we do. I'm drawing these circles very sloppily, but it doesn't really matter because nature isn't perfect, so don't worry too much about it. And here another one, the same kind of way. And with that, basically have the levels that I want. You can have as many in between levels as you want, but I would recommend to you only one at maximum, because it doesn't help you that much. And if you're having trouble drawing these circles, there are tools that you can use, especially if you're drawing digitally, then you can just use the circle drawing tool and predefine the ratio. Let's finally start sketching out the actual rows. At first you have to make a decision of whether to start with the innermost or the outermost petal layers. Personally, I prefer to start with the center and work myself outwards, since I have an easier time to keep everything centered. And I highly recommend doing so if you draw a rose from top view or close to that. But if your view angle is closer to side view, then it can be advantageous to start with the outer layers. In this video, I'm going to show you both approaches. This one here will start from the middle. And so I'm just drawing these small curves here, very close to each other. And you can imagine some spiral shapes that overlap with each other, add some C curves, some S curves. It is completely up to you how you want to construct it. 
the center is very tightly packed, so you have a lot of petals very close to each other and overlapping. When you draw these petals, at first I'm just drawing the edges of them, and then later I will add the sides. And there you go, you see it is looking more three-dimensional now. When you add these sides, keep in mind what I told you about how the petals are curving. Here at the center, the innermost petals are curving inwards. Here they would be simply vertical and then they curve further and further to the side. Do not shy away of bringing in some imperfections and asymmetry. As I said, nature isn't perfect, so you will make a more authentic looking rose by adding these things. So here and there you have a larger gap followed up with some smaller ones once again. Also go ahead and sketch out the darkest areas. It will make everything a bit less confusing. And as we get further to the outer layers, the edges of the petals will start to fold more and more. And you can draw these folds by having two kinds of lines. At first the inner line, which is smooth, and then you draw the actual edge, like here. You leave out a small gap, you don't close it, otherwise it will look too sharp. And then you just simply curve around. Draw this little line here, and the illusion is complete. Often these edges, these folds, are separated into several parts, like so. And that is because the petals aren't rectangles, but they have a round shape, like so. First of all, they're curving inwards at the sides, because they want to follow the round shape of the rose. And because of that, they cannot bend at a straight line, like so, over here. But instead, they have to follow a curve. In order to distribute this kind of tension, they sometimes fold into several parts. It also has to do with the fact that the edge of these petals isn't perfect, but often has some kinds of irregularities. Also, because of the round shape, they always curve downwards at the sides and don't just abruptly end. And as we get further and further to the outer layers, those folds will become larger and larger. When you progress down like so, do not make the mistake of repeating a pattern. Here I already have kind of like a zigzag pattern going on and I want to break it now and not continue it even further until it would look unnatural. So instead of just continuing right along this line, I will just simply pull it over here. And so in total, I recommend you to just go crazy. The rules are more guidelines than actual rules. And I said it already often enough, but again, nature isn't perfect. And so add in some imperfections and add in some asymmetry, some smaller gaps here and some larger over there. And yeah, as I said, go crazy. Let's speed things up because it will get too repetitive otherwise. I have a drawing already prepared beforehand. Alright, looking much better now. Drawing and talking at the same time is difficult. I try to not perfectly follow the guideline circles, otherwise the rose would look unnatural. Additionally, I've added sketches of the green stuff, you know, the stalk and leaves. I won't focus too much on these, because this video is mostly about the actual flower. Well, the stalk itself shouldn't be too thick. Also, in order to make it more interesting looking, don't draw it in just one straight line, let it curve. The rose might or might not have thorns, depending on the kind of rose. When you do, make sure to let the thorns curve upwards. At the spots where it branches out to the leaves, it grows some small protrusions. These ones here have a long form with pointed tips and jagged edges. When drawing the jags, don't make them too pointy. About 90 degrees is alright. Ok, let's switch to the finished version now. As always, in what kind of style you draw your rose in is completely up to you. But I can tell you a little bit about the highlights, shades and colors. I chose the color red because, well, it's the most popular one. There will be other colors too though, no worries. When doing the shading, make sure you are creating a high contrast. The deep ridges should be very dark. Other than that, you mostly have soft transitions, since the petals barely have sharp angles. Add some reflected light too, especially on the edges of the center petals. Don't make the highlights too strong however, the petal surface isn't that reflective. Alright, now on to the second drawing, which is going to be more from the side. So once again I'm choosing my middle point and draw a line downwards, but this time it's going to be much longer. 
here the in-between point, the lowest point, and then way further below is going to be the bottom of the rose. In the previous drawing we weren't able to see the bottom of the rose because it was blocked by the folded over petals, but in this case we will be able to see it. The overall angle is not perfectly from the side, but slightly up, so we are still able to see the centermost petals. And I did that simply because I think the center of the rose looks very pretty. By the way, the distance between those marks isn't predefined. You can also have them at very different spots. And I'm drawing the circles once again, this time much more squished. Because, well, we're looking at it from the side. And so we have those narrow oval shapes like so. I'm trying to draw the circles fairly quick because we already have seen this part. And here at the bottom we simply copy the top circle right here. Like so. And we have this kind of cylinder. And then when we draw the petals, I'm going to start from the very bottom and curve up like this. This here is going to be the inner line once more. And then I simply add this edge here, curve around and again leave a small gap in order to keep the roundness of these petals. And the bottom here shouldn't be too smooth like a bowl of some sorts, but add some imperfections over here too and then curve around to the side. And then we simply work ourselves upwards, one step after another. Here in this case I want to have the edges a bit rougher looking with sharp corners. Curve around here too, one step at a time. And this is simply how you would progress until you get to the very middle. And I'm going to speed up very quickly now. And in the middle, you're going to spiral towards the center. The petals won't really show much of like a fold, it's just simple lines. And then at some point, you would get to the tightly packed center. Again, if we would have chosen the view angle to be exactly from the side, we wouldn't be able to see the center, because the center is slightly lower than the highest petals here. Okay, I'm not spending that much time on this one, since it doesn't work that differently to the previous drawing. Once again, looks much better. You see that the edges are a bit rougher, a bit pointier with sharp corners, and you can see the asymmetry as I curved up to the left here and gave the rose a very unique look. And also, you only really see the outermost petals fold over, just simply because of the view angle. I want to emphasize again that you shouldn't follow those guideline circles perfectly. And here is the finished version, this time in pink. When painting in this color, make sure you establish this kind of transition from a strong pink to an almost white. And even with a bright color like this one here, you want to establish a strong contrast between the brightest and the darkest spots. Okay, I have one more drawing, but this time I will show you a fast forward of its drawing process. And in the meantime, I'll tell you some interesting facts about roses. Alright, let's go. The reported numbers of how many different species of roses exist varies a lot, because there is a significant disagreement over it, but usually the lists exceed 300 different species. There is a rose bush growing on the wall of the Hildesheim Cathedral in Germany estimated to be at least 700 years old. It's also called the Thousand Year Rose. The legend around it suggests that it exists since the year 815, and I didn't find any information of what happened about 700 years ago. But either way, it is still the oldest rose bush in the world. And did you know that roses produce fruits called rose hips? I didn't know that before doing the research for this video. They can even be eaten raw, or used for tea, jam, pies, and all sorts of other purposes. And so this is the last finished drawing of a rose in this video. A blue rose. This color is famous, but actually does not appear in nature. As a matter of fact, even crossbreeding and gene manipulation was only able to achieve a lavender colored rose. Pure blue roses, like this one here, require white roses and, well, blue dye. But apparently, creating a real blue rose is kind of like the holy grail of rose breeding. They do appear a lot in literature, art and other kinds of media. 
So that's it for the drawings in this video. Now it's your turn to draw some pretty roses. It certainly was an interesting challenge for me, since I wasn't really used to drawing flowers, and roses are fairly complex too. But I enjoy the freedom you have when shaping all of these petals into a unique rose. Okay, as always, if you have any questions or constructive feedback, then please leave a comment down below. And for more information and links, please check out the description of this video. There is quite a lot in there. Alright then, have fun drawing. You're so crazy.